I had a super busy morning at the church and when I came home I thought I'd really like to weave something but I can't really be bothered calculating something or knowing whether I've got enough yarn for it or any of that and I knew that I had heaps of uh, little bits and pieces of yarn that could be used up somehow and so what I ended up doing was putting on a short warp and um, just kind of started weaving and this is I really love this sort of weaving because it's just an anything sort of style I mean you can plan it you can have a, a picture and do a landscape or a seascape or something like that if you want to or you can just do what I did and just start weaving so um, what I've got here and what you will need to do this is some sort of beater um, or a fork is fine and actually for this particular type of weaving a fork is even better because you can kind of get into those curves if you're making curves and uh, this beater is just a little bit too rigid so you're going to just warp up your loom as usual but for most of this we're not going to be using the um, heddle uh, we're going to be using our fork. We'll, we'll use the the reed initially for the first few rows but the, after that you use the fork. Um, if you are looking to weave up something really quick this is probably not the best project to start on. It takes a lot of time and of course it's a weft faced weave so we're, we're beating the weft down and condensing it so of course that takes longer as well um, so I thought I could just give you a general overview of how I've how I've been weaving and then I can wind it on and actually show you how I started out because uh, you can see this is all wonky and that's all intentional but I need to show you how to start out so that you can get that wonkiness as well um, and I'm also, I'm using a few tapestry techniques and um, I'll show you a little bit of that too. Like I've used a little bit of needle weaving in here to fill in a gap. Uh, I'm really just exploring and having fun. It's, it's really great. Uh, so I've got the heddle in the up position. Oh, now I said that we're not going to be using the heddle. That's not completely true. We're not going to be using it to beat, but we are going to be changing sheds still. Just the up and down sheds like normal no pickup sticks or anything for this so I'm in the up shed and um, just taking through the thread that I used for the last pick and I'm just going to follow the contours of that line now uh, in my other videos you'll note that you you do the 45 degree angle you you have it fairly straight and everything it's different for this you can still pinch a little at the side so that your sides are neat if that's important to you but this time we're going to leave it a little bit slack and we'll start at the left hand side because that's the way that the thread's running through and I find it generally works out better if you do that and just beat it down following the contours you've already created something I've been doing a bit is um, on this side I've been beating extra hard because I, I want that sort of squash down look over here and a wider look over here so that's what I've been doing there and I've been beating more lightly on the left hand side alright so if it's um if it's sticking up a little bit you can give it a little tug to um, put a bit of tension on it to make it tighter okay so then change to down shed and take it back through just so that you can see what the actual weaving's like once again I'm organizing the edge but I'm leaving that fairly slack and this time I've taken the thread through that way so I'm going to start from this side beating down remember this is the side that I was beating a bit harder for Okay, um, 
I think I'll leave off that one at the moment. So this is what I really love about this. It's like, hmm, what shall I do next? Oh, I think I like the way that looks. You're really creating on the loom. Um, so what I've got here is I've got all these little balls of yarn. Uh, now, I'm as far as yarn goes, I'm mixing up my cottons with wools and whatever else I fancy because this is not going to be laundered, so that's not important. But if you are making a piece that is going to be laundered, you need to consider what sort of yarns you're using and whether they're going to wash at the same rate or whatever. Um, hmm. <laughs> okay, um, I think I will just use this purple because I haven't got any purple in this yet and I think it would look nice so I was going to change to the upshed and now I'll bring in the purple now I've this ball is probably a little bit big as you can see make your ball a little bit smaller and I should have done that before the video but these are the things that you don't think of okay leaving that a bit slack and going to beat that yeah and the down shed got to get that ball through there again yeah definitely a smaller ball or you can make a yarn butterfly if you don't know how to do that you can probably just google it because it's a um, tapestry weavers use yarn butterflies all the time Yeah, it's up to you really how hard you beat, uh, but I think it looks good if a lot of the weft is covered up. Just That's just a personal preference. Okay, so now I've got a line of that. Now, what if I was thinking, well, um, I'd sort of like to bring in something over this side, because I've got a lot of colour over this side, but I want something extra over this side now. Okay. Well, I'll just cut off, cut off that ball. Because I'm not planning on using that, that yarn again at the moment at least, for the moment. And let's see, what could I use for my colour? I've got a nice green here. Yeah, that could be good. A nice block of green over there. So, um, I was just in the down shed. So I'll go in the up shed. And I think to tie it all in, I will do one line of green across first. Um, across here. Now, when I come back with the green, I don't want to just do another line of green. I want it to come to, oh, I don't know, maybe to here somewhere. So I'm going to change sheds, go back into the down shed. And this time, instead of going right across, I'm going to go just, I, you gotta because I'm just doing this randomly, I can choose for what I want to do. What's the matter, puppy? What's the matter? So, we can put that down through there. Once again, I don't have my ball of yarn organised very well. And my dog is distracting me. Let's just wind that up a little bit so it's more manageable. Alright. Beat that one down. And then I'm going to go back. So I'm going to change sheds. And just remember each time you want to change direction, you need to change sheds as well. Okay, so now my yarn's at the back. You can see that. 
and what I'm going to do is all right let me try to explain this I've got the yarn there so I'm going to go under the next thread and up into the shed through those okay so that when I pull it this way I've caught there and I can beat that now yep now I'm going to go back in the other direction so I need to change sheds again now this time when I come in what I want is a I could keep going on this um, same warp thread here that I was on with the last pick but I want to sort of uh, graduating you know easing back this way so I'm going to instead of going to that thread warp thread there where I can see the last piece of yarn passed around I'm going to go to the one next to it so into that shed and down again into the thread that's next to the last one. Beat that down. So that's going to give me, instead of a straight line of colour here, a block of colour if you like, it's going to be gradually going back. A bit like, you know, you might be doing this if you um, were building a hill or something like that. And um, I just like the way it looks when it's when it's sort of leaning like this one yeah I should have just said that like this in a curve instead of a straight line um, so here's our yarn at the back again and it was this warp thread that we ended at so I'm going to come up in the one after that one so I'm, I'm not going to come up under this one I'm going to come up under the next one into the shed I just realized how difficult this is to explain <laughs> especially when you've never tried to explain it to someone before I hope you can make sense of it but can you see I'm starting to get a curve there into the down shed again and back this time I'm going to go down over the next thread then back into the up shed and grab the next thread along and come through there so you could use this technique for making a wall hanging um, but at the same time it's a fully functional piece of fabric so you could use it to to make some other small object purse or um, something small like that, a, a gadget cover or anything like that um, but I like the way this looks so much that I'd like to see it in a frame or you know hanging on the wall as a piece of art okay up shed again so I'm just going to keep going in this in this way for a little while and then when I'm happy with the way it looks or I think I've done enough green then I'll come in with another color and I'll show you that as well <laughs> 